So picture this, you've finished your dinner, you've done the washing up, you're sitting on the couch, either scrolling on your phone, maybe doing a bit of work or watching some TV, and you've got this incredible, intense desire for something sweet. Those chocolate biscuits are calling your name. This is one of the most common questions I get asked and people wanna know the answer. So that is what my nugget of inspiration is all about today. How to beat the nighttime nibbling and those strong sensations of craving in the evening. So we need to look at why it's happening first of all. One, we need to look at your dinner. So if your evening meal, the last meal you've had before you sit on the couch is too low in protein, you haven't had your good half plate of veg, your two, three big handfuls of veg, then there's probably not enough um, in that meal that was actually really filling for you, okay? You need fiber and protein to feel really full. The other thing I see people doing is having no carbohydrate with their evening meal, and then they're kind of like craving the lollies or something sweet later on. And you've got to really question, is it better just to have a quarter cup of rice, half a cup of rice, um, some quinoa, something a little bit starchy that's nourishing, that actually makes you feel like you've had something then, if you are, you know, instead of kind of eating those chocolate biscuits or craving something sweet afterwards. So check your dinner out some hormonal changes, time of the month, things that can go on in that regard, being pregnant, menopause, those kind of things can um, create some sensations of cravings. Um, also some uh, nutritional deficiencies can, but in the majority of cases, what I would say that I see most of the time is actually just a really strong evening habit of having something to eat after dinner, okay? And what you may remember from um, the video I did before about habits is if your brain sees a pattern of behavior over and over again, it will try and repeat that and do it on autopilot so you don't have to think about it. And in in the you know in nighttime eating, that's really, really unhelpful because a lot of the time we don't wanna be doing that. So what happens is your brain picks up the trigger, which is I finished dinner, I'm sitting on the couch, it's eight o'clock, whatever that trigger is. And then um, essentially it anticipates those chocolate biscuits, it anticipates that glass of wine and it creates this sense of agitation in your body and you literally feel like, you know what, like I feel like if I just don't eat that biscuit, like you feel agitated, irritated. And that's because what happens when your brain sees the same thing over and over again, it starts to release dopamine, which is a feel good hormone, but also the hormone involved in motivation. Um, it releases that in anticipation of you getting the chocolate biscuits. Cause it thinks to your, it, it thinks, oh my goodness, I need to get those chocolate biscuits. I see this happening every day. So it creates, it creates this kind of like, unrest in your body because it's trying to get you to move towards the thing it thinks you want but obviously there's a counterpart to that because you don't really want to be eating those chocolate biscuits but you feel like you almost need to to get rid of that agitation so something I see all the time how do you manage it this is all about action in these nuggets of inspiration so the first thing is to be aware that is a physiological response, that agitation in your body, if it's a habit-based thing going on there. And if you ride the wave, it will pass, okay? I know you might not believe me, but it actually will. So if you can just notice that feeling of agitation and just sit with it, um, and ideally do something to distract yourself that has nothing to do with food, that would be helpful. So maybe have a shower, listen to some music, a podcast, um, do some research on healthy recipes, whatever it is, do something, ideally nothing to do with eating or drinking, okay? So no food in your mouth, you don't necessarily need anything unless it's a herbal tea or a glass of water. So often I see people when they're trying to get over those evening cravings is replace one food with another, okay? So it's like, oh, you know, I really have a chocolate biscuit, so, but I shouldn't eat a chocolate biscuit, so I'll eat an apple. And then I'm not really, that craving's not satisfied, so I'll have a teaspoon of Nutella. And then the craving's not, you know, blah, 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 blah. You have the chocolate biscuit anyway, right? It's nothing to do with food. These things are very little to do with needing food. This is not about being hungry. This is actually about something else. So sitting with it, riding the wave, distracting yourself is the first thing to do there. The second thing is to be mindful that this habit can um, can be started by 
not only a time trigger, but an emotional trigger of feeling. So the two most common things I think I see probably most, most often with the evening eating is one, a feeling of loneliness. So if you are by yourself um, or spend a lot of time on your own, then food can essentially feel like company. And it's um, part of your evening routine to sit down and eat. It can also feel like a sense of reward for yourself at the end of the day. But again, you're not hungry. You're just filling that, um, that emotional void. So it's about looking for alternative ways to feel um, not lonely rather than using food. The other one, and this is a little bit more tricky, but um, is really super common, is we use food and eating and drinking to connect with people. So a lot of people I see will maybe nibble something or have drinks with their partner or flatmates or whatever it is after dinner because it's a connection time and they're eating and drinking to feel connected with that other person. It's an experience that they are sharing and it makes them feel united. And you know, that's great that food and drink does that, but when you're sabotaging your health and well-being, and you don't really need that food or drink, we need to find other ways to help you guys feel connected um, that have nothing to do with eating and drinking. And that might be watching something together, it might be, playing a board game, having a chat about something, listening to music together, but trying not to use food and alcohol in that space if that is your goal. So we just need to get rid of all that non-hungry eating and drinking at night because so often it's just, we're using that to fill some kind of other void, okay? So um, it's a pattern that I see often. If you watched my video on the time of eating, you'll realize there's another reason why it's super, super, um, unhelpful to be doing that nighttime eating. It compromises the quality of your sleep. Um, it is, uh, we, we really need to try and consolidate our eating. Most people consolidate our eating. Um, it's really unhelpful for your digestive system and for a lot of the processes that go on at night when you need to not have food in your stomach. So really, really super helpful to, uh, to have that gap before you go to bed and not eat that food. So I hope that's been helpful. If you've got any comments or questions around nighttime eating, share them with me. I'd love to know your experiences and um, I look forward to talking to you for another nugget soon.